Let's talk to Zudon. Calm yourself, Zudon. I'm Magistrate Dai Renjai. Dai Renjai? What happened to Liu? Mr. Liu Zelen has been relieved of his duties. I am in charge now. Ha! So they've replaced one crooked official with another! I am not crooked, and I'm not your enemy. I'm not your enemy, Mr. Zhu. Whatever you may think of my predecessor, I'm here to find out the truth about your daughter's murder. You... you mean you'll... you'll investigate her case? Yes, Mr. Zhu, and although I do not yet know your involvement in the case, I can promise you this. If you are indeed innocent, you will not sit in this jail a day longer than necessary. I... am sorry for what I said before, but that man Liu, he accused me of killing my own daughter! Despite everything that's happened in my life, I've, I've never felt anger at my own fate. But what was done to Lin Fei, it, it burns me up inside, knowing that the man who hurt her is still out there. You have to help me, Magistrate Dai. My daughter deserves justice. So, uh, tell me about yourself. I was a patriot once. Not unlike you, I imagine. I fought and sacrificed for my country. I gave my youth to protect it on the battlefield. Now I'm but a decrepit old man, disposable in the eyes of men like Zhu Le Liu Zelen. You're in the army? I was an Imperial soldier in the Tiger Regiment, until the accident changed everything. Tell me what happened. For the first time in a long time, I was home. They gave me a short break between tours of duty, and I was glad to be back with my wife and daughter. That morning, I had taken Lin Fei for a walk in the park. She was only five. The sky was blue and pure. I remember looking upon the heavens, thankful and content. Out of nowhere, blackness billowed into the air. I do not know how the fire started. All I know is that by the time we made our way back, the flames had already engulfed the entire house. But I was fearless back then. I ran inside, hoping to save my wife, but the gods were angry that day. They spared my life, but took my wife and my eyes. Now I look upon the sky no longer. And your daughter, she witnessed this? we never spoken about that day. Deep down, I've always hoped that she was too young to remember. But sometimes I could hear it in her voice, the horror of the flames and the ashes. Tell me about your daughter. After her mother died, I tried my best to take care of her. We managed for a while. The Imperial Army kept me around, gave me odd jobs here and there, but eventually, they decided they had no use for a blind soldier anymore. But even as a teenager, Lin Fei was headstrong and rebellious. Rebellious. She stormed into the Imperial Army base, demanding an explanation for my discharge. I had to plead with my superiors to spare any punishment. I told her we needed to accept our fate, but in that moment, I could feel something in her change. How did you carry on? For a year, we scrambled to get by. These were difficult times. Then, one day, she came home with some money, said it was an advance from a family she'd met. She said they offered her a job as maidservant and wanted her to move into their house in the countryside. She was only 16. I didn't want her to go, but she had made up her mind. Do you know who she worked for? No, she didn't say. She said they were very rich and they, they didn't want people to know where they lived. Every month she would have someone deliver some money to me. It went on like that for almost five years. And then she came back? Yes, almost two months ago now. I remember it well because everyone was talking about Consort Wu's rise to the throne. But all I could think about was my daughter's return. She gave me no warning or explanation, but I didn't care. I was just happy to have her back. After your dismissal, what changed? She changed after you were fired. How did she change? She was always a strong and confident girl. Even during quieter moments, I could sense her calming presence. But then she became distant. Her silence held a different sound to it, if you know what I mean. She was no longer at peace. Hmm, I don't know what changed about her, though. It seems like she was more disturbed. Five years is a long time. Did she seem different after her return? Her, you have to understand, Magistrate Dai. She was away for almost five years. But to answer your question, yes, she was different. She was even stronger than I'd ever thought possible. Did she have any friends? No, Lin Fei always preferred to be alone. I think what happened to her mother... She chose the safety of her loneliness over the prospect of loss and pain. So, uh, about the night of the murder? Take me back to the night of the murder. I remember it perfectly well. Earlier that evening, I decided to go to the waterfront to take some tea to the boardwalk. It's usually quiet at dusk, so I stay to enjoy the sunset. People ask me how a blind man can appreciate such a thing. I tell them it's the heat. I can feel the sun's embrace slowly shift on my skin. Once the warmth is gone, I know it's time to leave, but 
something strange happened that day. I reached out for my walking stick, which I placed under the table in front of me, but it wasn't there. I searched for it, even asked the tea house staff for help, but it was gone. So somebody stole his walking stick. Perhaps that person stole the walking stick, purposely trying to frame him for the murder. You're certain you had it with you? Of course, without it I lose my way! I had to convince one of the waiters to escort me home. A nice young man with a kind voice. He said he could help me, but only after he finished his shift. So I waited. About an hour he came back and did as he promised. So the waiter took you home. Did he go inside your house? No, we parted ways outside and I entered the house alone. The silence inside bothered me immediately. As I approached the middle of the room, I could feel the wet surface under my feet. I was standing in my daughter's blood. I fell to my knees and extended my arms, reaching out to her. My heart sank when I felt her cold body. I cradled her head in my arms. I vaguely remember calling out for help. I don't know. The rest is hazy. Your daughter's murder was a senseless and deeply unsettling event. Heaven willing, justice will be done. You have a kind voice, Magistrate Dai, much like the young man who helped me get home that evening. Like him, I hope you will keep your word. That's all for now. We'll speak again soon. Thank you, Magistrate Dai. Thank you. So, we have absolutely no clues here on this board. Ooh, it looks like we only got five things to do, but we need to collect evidence. Yeah, last case we had to find, um things or so? Can we use one of these items on him, perhaps? I don't think that's a good idea. I'll try using this on him. Hmm. Okay, never mind. We're not going to use any of our items on him. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything else we can talk to the other characters about before heading out to the crime scene. There is not. Okay. Let's just head out to the crime scene. I doubt there's something we can talk to the coroner about, because... Yeah, there would be no reason for me to talk to the coroner, really. So let's go to the victim's house. So this is the victim's house. We have an alleyway. This is one of Chang'an's poorer neighborhoods. The people who live here are usually traders or artisans. We have some laundry. And there's a puddle. It's a large puddle of water. It collected last evening's rain rather effectively. The soft dirt in this yard makes it easy to leave impressions on its surface. Hmm. Soft dirt? Yeah. Hmm. What are these? Those are footprints. Those are footprints leading to a window. From this vantage point, I see a large part of the interior of the house. Let's check out these footprints. The footprints are deep enough to have collected some rainwater inside of them. Someone must have stood here for a long period of time. Was someone spying on Zhu Lin Fei and her father? That's a possibility. Hold on a second. Was there a hole in the fence? Oh, there is, but I guess we can't examine it. Okay, so I'm just gonna double check to make sure there's nowhere in the house we can go to. Nope, just this one room. So we've got a small kitchen. Ordinary kitchen utensils. Nothing noteworthy here. We have a small table. Dinner table. Curiously, the two dining chairs are placed nowhere near it. That is curious. Area of interest. <laughs> Love the name of that. The blood is dried, but the large gruesome stain that was left behind is an unsettling reminder of what took place here. Let's see the window from this side. I guess you could see a, a decent part of the room from there, yeah. Contains uh, ordinary personal belongings. Okay. Let's just look at everything. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at everything. Only one bed in the house. This must be where Zoo Don sleeps. Where does his daughter sleep if there's only one bed? Maybe she sleeps on this mat. A rolled up straw mat. That must be where Zhu Lin Fei slept. I would unroll it just to make sure there's nothing like hidden there, but I guess we can't. Let's check out this area of interest. Is that any different from the other area of interest? So let's... This is where the murder took place. Let's examine everything. The blood stains. As expected, the removal of the victim's heart caused profuse bleeding. There's no discernible pattern to it. What's with this tip chair? A dining chair in the middle of the room? This chair must have been placed here for a purpose. 
Coroner Yao said the killer was likely standing above and behind Zhu Lin Fei when she was strangled. Perhaps the killer forced her to sit here before he strangled her, but why would she cooperate? What's this? A small fragment of wood under the chair. Fragment of wood added to inventory. Let's check out the other chair. The dining chair is placed near the bed, but why? Did the killer use it while he was waiting for her? Summarize. According to this scene, the killer somehow managed to draw Zhu Lin Fei into the house and onto the center chair. It also appears as though he sat in the chair next to the bed while waiting for her arrival, no doubt further hinting at the threat he posed to her father. But there are no signs- why are there no signs of a struggle? Like, if I came into a, a house and there's a stranger there, I would- I would be kind of freaked out. Why are there no signs of a struggle? Why didn't she run or fight back? Hmm. Very, very, very mysterious. <laughs>